You're watching The 7 from WATE 6 on your side. Good evening, I'm Bo Williams, and welcome to The 7. Let's get a look at the Big 7 stories right now, and topping the list for us tonight, a court order is ending Mike Stanfield's time as mayor of La Follette. In 2020, Stanfield was indicted for official misconduct. A state audit raised questions about Stanfield using city workers on private property. Friday, that turned into a petition for ouster. According to the city of La Follette Charter, the vice mayor, Philip Farmer, will step in as mayor until the general election next year. But both the city manager and the city attorney agree they will not be skipping a beat during this transition. We all knew something was going to come sooner or later, but I, I, I wish the best for him. The city of La Follette is looking forward to putting this chapter behind us and, and, and look at a positive outcome in the future for the city and, and its taxpayers. On December 7th, the city will swear in Farmer to become mayor, but that transition was effective as of this morning. You can find the petition for ouster on WATE.com. Next up in the Big 7, tragedy struck during a holiday parade. In just seconds, an event kicking off the Christmas season became a crime scene when a driver drove an SUV into a holiday parade in Milwaukee. Now, at least five people died and over 40 were injured. 18 children were admitted to a local hospital. Six of those kids, we understand, were listed in critical condition. Investigators have the driver now identified as Daryl Brooks in custody. No pursuit that led up to this incident. This is not a terrorist event. Part of the mayhem was also captured on the city's live stream of the parade and various cell phone cameras. Next up, there may be a better time of the day to get yourself tested for COVID-19. Uh, with many people getting tested for COVID-19 before seeing family for Thanksgiving, there's new research about the best time of the day to get a test to make sure that it is accurate. Vanderbilt professor Carl Johnson started a study after an emergency room doctor told him people's symptoms seem to be worse during certain times of the day. Now, he looked into about 85,000 tests done by Vanderbilt, which were time stamped. They found people were twice as likely to have an accurate positive test result if they tested in the middle of the day compared to at night. He said that this could be because the amount of virus shed into our blood or mucus is higher earlier in the day and then decreases at night. I also want to emphasize that the difference is very significant. It's twofold or something like that. but. The, the thing is, it doesn't mean that we can go out to a bar at 11 o'clock in the night and then sneeze in people's faces and not worry about it. It's just as worrisome, you know, uh, from that perspective. Researchers say to try and schedule your test for the middle of the day, if you can, to ensure the most accurate result. Now in the Big 7, Chancellor Dondi Plowman is now telling campus workers that they will have to get a COVID-19 shot by early January. UT determined in October that it has to go along with the federal mandate because of its contract work for the government, which is now tied to pandemic precautions. Last week, UT got a waiver making it exempt from Tennessee's new ban on mask and vaccine mandates. This covers full-time, part-time, and temporary employees at nearly all UT Knoxville buildings and student employees whose primary workplace in those buildings. Now, this does not apply to other students who do not work for the university, and it does not apply to workers at buildings, including athletics facilities, dorms, Greek houses, rec sports, and a small number of what UT calls non-academic buildings. Now, the deadline to be fully vaccinated is January 18th, but since it takes a while for the shots to take effect, the exact timeline depends on which vaccine a worker chooses. That deadline also applies if someone gets a medical or religious exemption. In the next Big 7 for you, some big prospects coming out of ORNL. Uh, the U.S. Secretary of Energy, Jennifer Granholm, paid a visit to Oak Ridge earlier today. She toured the Oak Ridge National Lab to look at the innovative work our region is doing. Now, she is using this trip to highlight the bipartisan infrastructure law and President Biden's Build Back Better agenda, which gives more funding to national labs. These investments are focused on bringing economic development, new jobs, and transitioning to more resilient clean energy. The goal here is to get to 100% clean electricity by 2035 and zero carbon emissions by 2050. Transportation Security Administration expects travel may be very close to pre-pandemic levels this holiday. Holiday travel, it's here. And McGee-Tyson Airport is expecting this Wednesday and then the Sunday after Thanksgiving to be the busiest travel days. So if flying is part of your plan this week, the airport has some advice to take as much stress out of, well, out of it as possible. First of all, a big tip for you, show up at least two hours early. That will give you plenty of time to find a parking spot. That way you can check in for your airline and give yourself plenty of time to get through the TSA security checkpoint. I think 
this year especially, travelers and people in the community are wanting to go fly and visit their loved ones for the holidays. And so we are definitely anticipating it to be a little bit busier than normal here at McGee Tyson Airport and maybe more people that aren't used to flying as frequently. So that's why we asked just to get out to the airport at least two hours before your flight because there will be more people here at the airport. Also, keep in mind, McGee Tyson's under that mask mandate, so you're going to need a mask inside the building. And when you're on your flight, uh, you can find other resources, including TSA checkpoint wait times and parking lot capacities on McGee Tyson's website. They are redoing one of those parking garages, so again, get there early. Hey, rounding out the Big Seven, one family is keeping tradition and creating a new one all at the same time. Amanda Leonardo and her family in Sevierville love real Christmas trees. They actually enjoy the process of getting the tree more than actually having one. That's why this year, although they are not spending Christmas at home, they are keeping one tradition, but changing it up slightly and donating the tree instead. My kids are teenagers and they still want to go with mom to go cut down a tree, even though, you know, that they know we're not going to have it in our house this year, you know, but the fact that they still enjoy that time with me and they respect the tradition, you know, that means a lot. Now, Amanda is offering the tree to anyone who needs it and lives in the East Tennessee area close enough to drive to. She plans on drawing a name before she and her kids actually go out and cut the tree this weekend.